Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we are gonna be looking at sort of the last thing we have to cover before we go to the almighty if else, the conditionals, the things that give your programs real power. I'm gonna close that before you get harmed by the sheer power that you're staring at there. In this video, we're gonna cover conditional tests. Let me rephrase that to sound a little bit less terrifying. You ever think about what truth really is, man? So I might not be able to answer that kind of question, but in terms of Python, I can tell you what truth is and isn't. They're called Booleans, and we'll talk a little bit about them in just a bit. Testing if something is true or false is something that you probably learned in grade school. It's basic logic. We're going to quickly take a look at how you translate that basic logic into Python. This is all going to make sense once I start rolling here. Think of all of this as tests. What would the REPL say after you typed these things in? So we're gonna say my name, instead of a single equals, we're gonna test to see if it's equal to Dave. We're gonna paste these values into our REPL and then start asking it questions. If I say my name, obviously the answer is going to be Dave. If that doesn't make sense, you're probably a few videos too far ahead. So go ahead and skip back. This double equals, not single equals, uh, I recommend that you, at least at first, say it out loud when you're typing it out in your programs and say is equal to, like is equal to, uh, because it's a very common error to leave the second one out and then you're actually doing assignment, uh, usually in a place where you really don't want it. Interestingly enough, that's where some very, very bad security vulnerabilities come from. So if I was to paste my name equals equals Dave, this isn't saying my name is going to be pointing to the value Dave. It's saying is my name, whatever that variable is pointing to, equal to the value Dave? And it is. So what I've really just done is asked, is this equal to this? And obviously it is because the REPL spits at that exact thing out uh, when you type in the variable. Okay, so this is one of these true or false values, one of these Boolean values that we're gonna be working with. For every equality, there must be an inequality or something. So we can also test if something isn't equal to something else. For example, my name is not equal to Steve. And this should also be true, right? Because my name is not equal to Steve. So for all these comparisons, we're really asking, is this true? That's what's going to get evaluated here. And so there's only two possible answers that the interpreter is ever going to give us, either true or false. So my name is not equal to Steve. What do you think that's going to be? That's true. My name isn't Steve. If I change this to my name is not Dave, we should get the opposite answer, right? My name is equal to Dave. We know that's true. So this is going to be false. All right, so this is just very basic logic expressed in Python. Even more obvious would be things like eight is equal to eight, eight is equal to seven. So this one's obviously gonna be true. This one's obviously gonna be false. Let's find out to, just to check our sanity. Eight is equal to eight, that's true. Eight is equal to seven, and uh, nope. And usually you won't be doing well, you should actually never be doing <laughs> comparisons like this, but you know, you'll be checking a variable against a value. For example, you'll be checking if my age is, for example, greater than 60. And that should return exactly false. Likewise, you have uh, less than, you have less than or equal to, you have greater than or equal to, so now my age is 30, so it is greater than or equal to 30. So here you've got some examples of those. Nice and simple, really straightforward logic. And one of the things that can be slightly confusing is combining these things. So PEMDAS applies. If you never uh, learned that in school, it is P-E-M-D-A-S. That's the order of operations that Python will apply. So if you have a statement that could be kind of ambiguous, uh, where multiple ones of these are chained together, it will first apply anything inside of, or evaluate anything inside of parentheses, then it'll do exponents, multiplication, division, addiction, addiction, yikes, addition, and subtraction. 
So we can come up with some fun combinations. For example, age is greater than 16 and age is less than 100. Let's say if we're trying to get ensure that age is between 16 and 100 and age is not defined, that is wonderful. Let's try that again. Age greater than 16 and less than 100. That's true. We can also do a fun version of this, 16 less than age, less than 100. That's actually a much cleaner way of doing it um, because when someone reads your code, they don't have to evaluate this side and then realize that you're actually chaining this together with something else that has to be true uh, and then do more thinking. This visually already tells you what it's doing. We're testing to see if age is between 16 and 100. Let's go ahead and evaluate that. So you can see that evaluates to the same thing. The important thing here is the and. The and lets you combine two different things. And we can actually use this directly with Booleans. I'm going to show you and and or right now. So true and false. I'm going to show you what that evaluates to and then talk you through it. Evaluates to false. What AND actually does, what the Python interpreter does when it sees AND, is it says, okay, I'm going to return true if both sides of me are true, if both things are true. So true and true is true and true. That's the only time that AND will return true, is if both things that you're testing are true. If you use OR, or has a short circuit behavior. The first true thing it sees, it'll return true. So if I say true or false, it'll say true. If I say false or true, it will also return true. The difference between these two cases is this short circuit behavior. The or never even evaluates this. So I'm just passing in true and false, but if this is some complicated comparison or some very computationally expensive calculation, then it will never even be executed. So you won't have the performance penalty of actually having to evaluate both things. Because if or finds any, any value as false, like the first one, it will never evaluate the second one. It only evaluates the second thing if the first thing is false. Does that make sense? As soon as it finds something truthy, it returns true. In this example, it found something truthy faster because it was on the left side here. It was evaluated first. On this side, it actually had to evaluate both things. Is false true? No. Okay, so we could still fail. So let's check the second side. Is true true? Yes. So true. One of these was true. The only way that this returns false is if both sides evaluate to false. So you can make yourself a little truth table where each of these things are seen in combination, and you can do that. But for the most part, you will just intuitively learn this as you write programs, and I don't want to waste your time in a big way by telling you to like memorize these silly little things now. You will figure out if you have these kinds of problems and if you need to spend more time uh, experimenting with this. Finally, I want to talk about the thing that we've actually been dealing with, Booleans. I've mentioned them a few times. Boolean values are just true and false, truthy and falsy values. Traditionally, they're represented as 0 and 1, so 0 is false and 1 is true. Um, you can see that 0 is false, 1 is true, it sort of is a truthy value, even though it's not the canonical true value in Python. What you would actually use Booleans for in your program is usually to track some kind of state. If you're defining Booleans, like using the values true and false and not just working with them in tests like this that evaluate to a true or false value. You'll be using them with variables like is blah, usually. This is like a nice convention because it hints to the program, hey, this is gonna be either true or false. It is something or it isn't something. So is authenticated, if someone's logged in, you could set that to true during the login function. Is an admin, well, during that log login function, you can check, is this user an admin? Or am I gonna let them do admin-y things? Well, no, they're not. Well, you could set that to false. So it's a way of tracking state in your program, and then you can check those values when, for example, that user tries to uh, delete the critical core files that you rely on for whatever. Well, then you can check 
is this person logged in? Is they, are they authenticated? True. Okay, they might be able to do this. Are they an admin? False. Well, then they can't delete any of those important files. That's the kind of thing you would actually use raw Booleans with in your program. Okay, these comparisons are all you need to go to the next step, which is understanding if and else. Actual branching logic in your programs. Uh, I'm really excited to get to that, so let's jump over to the next video and uh, I'll teach you what makes programming really powerful. So I'll see you there.